So this is just going to be a short video on how to totally remove the FL Sun Super Racer heat block from the effector. You can see this one here is crooked. It's got stuff all melted all over it. So we're going to change this one out completely. So you can also see that this one has filament stuck in it. So what I'm going to do is begin with taking the clip off, which in this case, the clip is upside down. Take that off. Then I'm just going to cut that off here because we want to put a new PTFE tube anyway, because this one is all damaged and you can see it's, it's not too good. So we're going to just cut that off right there, make it easier to work with. So there you have it. Now we just have the effector to work with. So first thing we're going to do is remove that tie wrap here so that we can remove that covering. Now we want to remove this covering here because we want to get to the red and yellow cable, which is the thermistor and the heat rod that we're going to change as well. So sometimes you can just pull this thing off and it'll come off easily. Other times you got to do some fancy cutting. And you can see this one's not going to cooperate very well so we're just going to gently cut it off just make sure you don't cut any of the wire on the inside so be very careful this may take a little while so i will just fast forward through this but you get the idea you got to take this tape off this covering because we want to use reuse that later Once you get all that tape removed, then it's easy just to remove this covering. Just pull and it'll come right off. So we have the covering off the wires. Now we're just gonna simply remove this heat block from the effector. If you notice inside here, there's two set screws. You wanna use this Allen wrench, get it in there, loosen that up, loosen that up, and there you have it. Comes off nice and easy. The easiest thing to do is if you know you're not going to use the heat rod and the thermistor, is just cut the wires off here because sometimes these connectors get stuck going through here. So we know that we're never going to get those out of there. So we're just going to cut the red, cut the yellow, and then this comes right out nice and easy. And you can see that the filament is still stuck in the hot end, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to be able to use this again anyway. This is a big mess. Next thing you want to do is look down in here, look in that hole, and you can see that there's still filament in there. So we got to push that through, all right? So you can either push it through or pull it out. So if you push that thing out, you can pull that out. Push down this silver part and the tube will come right out. Next thing, just look down through the hole Make sure there's no debris. Make sure there's nothing seated on the inside of that aluminum part. Uh, sometimes I use this. I just go in there and make sure there's nothing in there. And then I blow it off with this 
air can just for good measure. Here's one of the most important things to notice when you're putting in the new heat block assembly, or if you're even replacing the nozzle or the throat, make sure that the throat is at least sticking out one thread, just like this. It's got to look at like one thread on there and make sure that the nozzle is sticking out one thread or one and a half threads. You don't want the nozzle all the way in and you don't want the throat all the way in. It's got to look just like this. Next thing, we'll put in the new thermistor and new heat rod. So again, just look and see which way the hole is and you can see it's lined up perfectly. Put it in, putting it in this way is much easier, as you can see. Doing the same thing with this much easier. There you have it. Okay, so now what you want to do is make sure these set screws are not interfering with the wire at all. So because this is going to go in this way, hey, that's the way it's going to go in. So let me tell you one important thing first. After you have these inserted into the heat block, and then you're ready to insert this, make sure, make absolutely sure that the throat is all the way down and touching the cooling fins. All the way down, down and straight. All the way down. All right. So let's put the, the mister in, I mean the uh, heat rod. So the heat rod, you can see, it's going to be bending a little bit to get it into this thing. So you want to make sure that it's level with the flat. And then make sure that it's like halfway out and halfway out. And tighten it up a little bit. Again, heat expands. But don't tighten it up too much, otherwise you're going to break it. So mister... Just put it in as far as the, the you know, black allows you to go. Again, just tighten it up so that it's a little bit tight. That's it. All right, so now, as I was saying, this is the way it's gonna go in. So you wanna bend these wires a little bit, make them go that way, that's why we made that flat in that area there. Push it in. And again, now it's going to be a little more difficult to compress, but you want to make absolutely sure that it's all the way down. Use two fingers. Press it down. Then, come back here and tighten up one of these set screws just to give you a position. That looks perfect. So now we'll tighten up the other set screw. And again, these you tighten up really well. And that's it. That's how you change it up, but make sure this thing is seated all the way in. And make sure the nozzle and the throat is the way I just showed you. So the next thing we're gonna do is put this cover back on. Again, a little bit tricky, but you can do it. Put it that way. Open it up. Now make sure that the wires are underneath that wrap. Perfect. Look at that. So now we're going to put a tie wrap back in here just to hold it onto the effector. I use this same sort of cloth tape. It sticks well and it looks good. So just cut off about three or four inches. Like that. And then wrap it in a direction that the, the opening is going. 
wrap it around once and then just bring it up onto the wire just so that it holds everything nice and neat. And there you have it. Perfect. So the remainder of what I'm gonna show you, I'll do it after I put this back into the printer. And again, while you have this out, or for any reason for that matter, make sure that all of these screws are somewhat tight. You don't want anything loose. I'm not gonna do them all here for you, but that, tighten those up. Tighten these up. And make sure all of these on the bottom are tight. Before you put the silicone boot back on. You're good to go. Looks perfect. Looks like brand new. Okay, so you can see we have it back on the printer, but there's no PTFE tubing. And I also want to show you how to change the nozzle without having to remove the actual heat block from the effector. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the heat up on the nozzle. PLA, we're gonna heat that up to 220. Right now we wanna cool the bed. So we're gonna leave the bed at, let me get this thing in focus, 220 and zero. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. All right, so you can see that I have it marked on my table, the length of the PTFE tubing. That'll be the first thing we, we do is let's cut a new piece of that. Here's our piece of tubing. So you can see that the temperature of the nozzle is at 220. So the first thing we're gonna do is lower the arm onto the, I put very thick cardboard here because we're gonna be pressing down. So bring it all the way down to the cardboard. Straighten out the PTFE tubing as best you can, make it nice and straight. Now you gotta remember when you're pushing this in, it's gonna go down about two inches and it's gonna wanna stop way before that. So you gotta wiggle it around and get it all the way down. So just put it in, wiggle it around, push it down, it stops, wiggle it around some more, push it down some more, until it's actually all the way at the bottom. Then what I do is make sure that it's all the way in. Then this is a little trick. Get a little flat head screwdriver, push down on the PTFE tubing, and lift up that little silver connector thing. The reason is, if you put this little clip in there first, before you lift that up, it's gonna lift up the PTFE tubing. So by holding it down and using the screwdriver, lift it up first, then insert it, you're gonna be all set. It's never gonna move. So now we're gonna connect the other end of the PTFE tubing into the extruder. And again, it's gonna wanna stop way short of where it's supposed to. So put it in, wiggle it around and then you can feel it go the rest of the way in and the same thing applies here use that little screwdriver pushing in the tube pull that down till you get a space now you put the clip in and it'll be perfectly set in there now most of the time you just want to want to remove the nozzle and not remove the entire hot uh, heat block from the effector so again Use your little wrench, hold the block in place, get one of these wrenches, unscrew the nozzle. You can feel it break loose. You're gonna take it all the way out and then you're gonna get your new one and put it in. And screw this up all the way until you feel it stop by hand. Then you want to give it a good tightening, not over tighten, we don't wanna break it, but you want it to be tight 
up against the throat. And just one more thing, just when you put that in, there's no re reason to move anything except hold the heat block with the wrench. You wanna make sure you still have one, one and a half turns of the thread showing on the bottom as you're tight against the throat. And lastly, put the silicone boot back on. Again, you don't wanna to touch that because it's 220 degrees Celsius. Push it up with a wrench, lock it into place. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about changing the nozzle and heat block on the FL Sun Super Racer.